welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, I'm taking you back to 1536 today, or some sources say 1537, which was, of course, in the reign of King Henry VIII. For it was on this day in Tudor history, the 10th of November 1536, that Sir Henry Wyatt of Allington Castle, politician, courtier, privy councillor, and father of the famous Tudor poet Sir Thomas Wyatt the Elder, died. He was buried at Milton in Kent. Now, he'd had a wonderful career. He'd acted as an executor of King Henry VII's will, and his offices during King Henry VIII's reign included Privy Councillor, Joint Captain of Norwich Castle, Knight Banneret, Master of the Jewels, and Treasurer of the King's Chamber. But I don't actually want to tell you about his life. I don't want to give a bio of his life. I actually want to tell you two stories that are associated with Sir Henry Wyatt and two stories that are actually concerning him and animals. Some trivia for you. According to his son, Thomas Wyatt, who was writing to his son, also called Thomas Wyatt, who was in fact the future rebel leader, Sir Henry Wyatt was once imprisoned. Thomas told his son that the grace of God preserved him in prison from the hands of the tyrant that could find in his heart to see him racked from two years and more prisonment in Scotland in irons and stocks from the danger of sudden changes and commotions diverse till that he went to him that loved him. And according to family legend, Sir Henry was close to death from starvation when, when he was imprisoned, when he, his life was saved by a cat. So as a cat lover, I really like this story. Now, we don't know sort of how true this story is, whether it's just one of those kind of anecdotes. But Annette Carson of the Richard III Society notes that the story comes from the 18th century Wyatt papers and specifically from Richard Wyatt in 1731, when he copied text from passages taken out of a manuscript wrote by Thomas Scott of Eggleston in Godmersham Esquire concerning the family of Wyatt of Allington. So this was an earlier uh, work and Richard Wyatt copied it, transcribed it. And Richard wrote, he was imprisoned often, once in a cold and narrow t tower, where he had neither bed to lie on, nor clothes sufficient to warm him, nor meat for his mouth. He had starved there, had not God, who sent a crow to feed his prophet, sent this and his country's martyr, a cat, both to feed and warm him. It was his own relation unto them from whom I had it. A cat came one day down into the dungeon unto him, and as it were offered herself unto him. He was glad of her, laid her in his bosom to warm him, and by making much of her, won her love. After this, she would come every day unto him, diverse times, and when she could get one, bring him a pigeon." He complained to his keeper of his cold and short fare. The answer was, he durst not better it. But, said Sir Henry, if I can provide any, will you promise to dress it for me? I may well enough, said he. You are safe for that matter, and being urged again, promised him and kept his promise, dressed for him from time to time such pigeons as his acator the cat provided for him. Sir Henry Wyatt in his prosperity, for this would ever make much of cats, as other men will of their spaniels or hounds. And perhaps you shall not find his picture anywhere, but like Sir Christopher Hatton with his dog, with a cat beside him. 
And there is indeed a painting of Sir Henry Wyatt in prison with a cat pulling a pigeon through the bars of his prison window. And we hear in that transcript uh, from uh, Richard Wyatt of how you know, Henry made his, uh, his jailer promise that if he could provide fair food, then his uh, jailer would dress it, i.e. prepare it. So these pigeons that were brought to him were then prepared for him to eat. I just love the story. It may not be true, but it is just a wonderful story. Another story concerning Sir Henry and his son Thomas um, is one including a lion. It is said that in Thomas Wyatt's childhood, his father Henry was raising a lion cub as a pet. You know, these, uh, these animals from uh, foreign countries, you know, it was trendy to have such, uh, such things as pets. And one day, this lion suddenly turned on Thomas and attacked him. It is said that Thomas had the presence of mind to grab his rapier and run it through the lion's heart. And apparently, when King Henry VIII heard this story, he was said to comment of Thomas Wyatt, Oh, he will tame lions. So I just wanted to share those stories that concern Sir Henry Wyatt. I mean, he had a wonderful, prestigious career at the Royal Court, but uh, sometimes I just like to sort of delve into stories concerning these Tudor characters. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live and you can, of course, give me a like. I'll see you tomorrow with another Tudor history event. See you then. Bye bye.